We're going to be describing a simple technique for cannulation to establish cardiopulmonary bypass through a sternotomy. The sternotomy was first performed. The pericardium was fully opened out. And after full heparinization to achieve adequate anticoagulation, a purse string is placed at the topmost visible portion of the ascending aorta on its concave side. Note that no attempt is made to dissect any tissue beyond the line of the pericardial reflection. A double purse string is used in the ascending aorta, primarily passing through the adventitia. The adventitia in the middle of the purse string is carefully opened out with the scissors. Then a 11-blade knife is used to create a 3 to 4 millimeter opening in the ascending aorta in a beveled fashion. Only the tip of the knife is inserted and care must be taken not to injure the posterior wall of the aorta. The aortic cannula is then introduced easily into the ascending aorta and secured using the purse string sutures. Securing the aortic cannula is, is very important as the patient's full blood volume circulates through this cannula at a 5 to 6 liter per minute flow. A heavy tie is used to secure the cannula to the uh, tourniquet and a second suture is then placed to secure the entire cannula and the tourniquet to the chest wall. This two-point fixation offers significant stability and security to the ascending aortic cannula. Once the suture is placed and tied in, the aortic cannula is carefully de-aired and attached to the cardiopulmonary bypass line. The cannula is de-aired. and attached to the cardiopulmonary bypass line. Once attached to the cardiopulmonary bypass circuit, retrograde perfusion of the cardiopulmonary bypass circuit is performed to remove the crystalloid from the pump and to avoid hemodilution. The next step is to place a purse string in the right atrium for venous return. My preference is to place the purse string on the free wall of the right atrium and avoid going too close to the junction between the atrium and the right ventricle. A large purse string is used to make sure an adequate seal is maintained around the cannula once it's snared. The large purse string facilitates the placement of the venous cannula, and again, as I mentioned before, once it's snared, it avoids any, ent any entrainment of air. A generous opening is made in the right atrium to introduce the large venous cannula. The cannula is positioned through the right atrium into the inferior vena cava and must sit comfortably 
to avoid any problems with venous drainage from the lower extremities and the abdomen. Again, the tourniquet is secured to the cannula, and the cannula is attached to the venous side of the cardiopulmonary bypass circuit. Retrograde perfusion of the circuit is performed to remove more crystalloid to further reduce the risk of hemodilution. Once the venous cannula is in place, with the heart still beating and full, a purse string suture is placed at the base of the right atrial appendage to introduce a retrograde cardioplegia cannula into the coronary sinus. This is a large U-shaped purse string at the base of the right atrial appendage. Retrograde cannula is now introduced through the right atrium, anterior to the venous cannula, and directly into the coronary sinus. Once it's inside the coronary sinus, which can be facilitated by manual palpation as well as echocardiography, full cardiopulmonary bypass is instituted to decompress the heart. With cardiopulmonary bypass established, the cardioplegia lines are carefully flushed to avoid any air in the lines. At this point, a purse string is placed in the ascending aorta to place the anagraded cardioplegia site. The anagraded needle is then secured into the ascending aorta. And then is de-aired and attached to the cardioplegia circuit. At this point, the aorta and the pulmonary artery are cross-clamped together, and anagraded cardioplegia is installed to arrest the heart. <laughs>